now to uh, our political correspondent, Tom Harwood, who's joining us um, from Downing Street, or Westminster, rather. And, uh, Tom, we, we saw the uh, what we believe was the prime ministerial motorcade, the armoured Jaguar, leaving Buckingham Palace a little earlier. We, we think that audience, and indeed the Cabinet, has now taken place. Yes, yes, that is exactly what we believe to have happened. Of course, it's not just an audience uh, with uh, the, the Prime Minister that the King uh, has held, but also will be looking to the other party leaders as well, having met uh, so many in the Privy Council today. Here in Westminster, however, uh, politics continues. It's the first uh, sitting day on a Saturday that we've seen in some time, since that extraordinary Saturday sitting day back in 2019 for the Brexit debate. It's only the sixth or seventh uh, sitting Saturday day that the House of Commons has had uh, in the last, uh, in modern history, really. So an extraordinary time for members of Parliament to come forward and pay their tributes to Her Majesty the Queen, many pointing to how their particular constituencies have uh, been influenced by the Queen or have uh, been touched by the Queen's long life, the late Queen, I should say. Uh, but Westminster is bo going to become more of a focal point in the days ahead. The Queen's body will come to lie in state in Westminster Hall behind me uh, for at least five days from the middle of next week. Uh, behind me you can uh, just about make out a marquee has been erected to begin the uh, process of establishing a security uh, station really for the many, many, potentially hundreds of thousands of people who will be wanting to pay their respects and walk past uh, the coffin of the late Queen which will lie in rest uh, in Westminster Hall, just as uh, the coffin of her mother did, just as the coffin of Winston Churchill did, and many yeah. before them. But Westminster is more of a focal point for this particular uh, coming week as well, because uh, for the first time since George II, it will be Westminster Abbey which will be the focal point for the funeral of the late Queen. Most funerals, uh, at least since the late 1700s, have taken place in, uh, in Windsor. This will be the first time in hundreds of years that the funeral of the monarch will take place in the same place that every monarch has been crowned since 1066, Westminster Abbey. But, but we would believe that, that the final uh, resting place, the interment, if you like, will be at Windsor, at um, uh, the King George VI Memorial um, Chapel, where we think that the, the, the Duke of Edinburgh's uh, casket, that the coffin will actually be placed next to hers eventually, that they, they will be reunited effectively. Yes, that does seem to be the plan. Of course, Windsor was a very special place for Her Late Majesty. It was uh, where she preferred to live when in this part of the country, Balmoral being her favourite place in Scotland, Windsor being her favourite place in England and her final resting place as is planned out will indeed be in that place where monarchs uh, for the last few hundred years have all been interned. Windsor became uh, the, the predominant royal residence at the time of George III and, and all monarchs since George III have been interned there but uh, Westminster Abbey being such a larger venue that can seat uh, 3,000 people maybe even up to 8,000 people, will be the venue for the funeral itself. It will be a significant national event expected to be on Monday the 19th of September. Yes, as you say, the first state funeral since uh, Winston Churchill back in, in 1965.